Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast here in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm your host, as always, Stan McCune, realtor right here in the Greenville area. You can find all of my contact information in the show notes if you need to reach out to me for any of your real estate needs in the upstate or elsewhere. Uh, please, I'm your guy. You can find my contact information in the show notes for your real estate needs. And just a reminder, as always, please like, rate, review, subscribe. Uh, unsubscribe, resubscribe, download episodes, comment, uh, any of those things that you can do uh, that would support the show, I would greatly appreciate from you guys. Um, today we are going to be talking about, and I'm just going to jump right in here, the market stats for the month of January that just came out last week. <clears throat> I didn't have, uh, they didn't come out soon enough for me to post them uh, for last week's episode, uh, but they came out now, and there's a lot of interesting things for us to look at here. So I just want to jump right in. If you're watching on YouTube, or if you're interested in seeing uh, these statistics that I'm about to show you, uh, you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, that's where you can see it. Uh, look up Selling Greenville Podcast. You'll be able to find it on there. Uh, but we're just going to jump right in. As always, these are the Greater Greenville Association of Realtors market stats for the greater Greenville area. These include Greenville, um, and there's also always going to be some uh, Spartanburg data in here. There's always going to be a little bit of, of Pickens County, easily, things of that nature. Uh, just because it is Greenville, uh, greater Greenville, doesn't mean it's only Greenville. So just keep that in mind. Um, we're just going to start right at the top here with new listings data. This, out of everything, um, is one of the most shocking prints of all we had the most new listings in january that we have ever had in any january ever since these stats uh have been published and have been have been looked at we had 1845 new listings in january to put that in perspective that is one of the highest prints that we've ever seen for any month and usually january is a very much a down month if you're looking um, at the chart that I have uh, that I'm showing you guys on YouTube, you can see anytime there is a vertical line, that's January. So you can see where we are. January of this year um, is comparable to what like peak summer months or peak spring months would have been in prior years. So that is just a, a really, really shocking print. We had a lot of people list their homes for sale um, in January of this year. And, um, and it's, interesting to see that right we'll we'll be discussing a little bit of of some of those dynamics why that might be happening as the show goes on but that's a 30.9 percent increase uh year over year from january 2023 was 1409 uh uh new listings uh which was honestly a pretty big number uh for last year but we're at 1845 new listings for the month of january this past year and what has that done? That has uh, had the result from what I have seen of uh, particularly the past few weeks, buyer activity on certain new listings has really been slow, right? Oh, I just realized I don't have my ring light on. I apologize for that. I've been trying to uh, improve uh, the, little by little the video for you guys. So there we go. If you're watching on YouTube, you you just got some uh, an upgrade to your light here. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, 1,845 new listings. The result of that is that some new listings, some old listings just aren't getting activity because people have a lot of new, fresh, uh, shiny objects that they can look at and a lot of new listings that they can look at. Um, and so that's very interesting. Not helpful for uh, for sellers that you know listed their home in early January or, or perhaps in December. Um, that is not helpful. That's, that's not helping you get your home sold. Um, but that... It, is just the way the market is right now. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's gonna be very interesting to see if February um, has a massive print like this as well. Um, but that was completely out of the blue. It doesn't surprise me. I have more listings than I normally do this uh, this time of year. Um, and I think others do as well. Obviously they have to, right? The, the, these numbers aren't coming from nowhere. Um, and so very interesting to see that number pop off the page. Pending sales, this is a number that's always uh, inaccurate for the most recent month. So we're gonna look back at December. December saw a point, 
uh, sorry, a 4.8% increase year over year versus December of 2022. That's great uh, for the most part. Um, however, January is going to be a down month. Now, I, again, this data is wrong. It's saying we had 799 pending sales, which is a uh, 34.8% 30, decrease year over year from January of 2023. That's not accurate. I believe that that 799 number will probably get revised into the 1100s uh, once we have all these numbers revised next month. Uh, but that will still put it as a negative year on year print from January 2023, which had 1,225 pending sales. So I'm, I'm anticipating that that's going to be a negative number, negative pending sales. So guess what happens when you have a sh huge spike in new listings and a decrease in pending sales? You have excess inventory sitting on the market and that can cause uh, prices to go down that can cause days on market to go up that can cause a lot of things uh, that we might not necessarily see in this data but we're probably going to see in future data close sales uh, this number is usually accurate uh, January was up 13.3 percent year over year on closed sales we had 878 closed sales as opposed to 775 January 2023 um, again demand has kind of stabilized um but a lot of that has to do a lot of that is just some of the spillover from uh from you know november and december pendings that have happened those end up getting closed in january um but it's good to see such a big uh increase 13.3 percent year on year um again with pendings in january being down as i'm anticipating that they are i, I would not be surprised if we have a negative print uh once uh, once we have uh, February statistics come out in the month of March. We'll have to, to keep an eye on that. Days on market until sale was flat month on month. Some of these uh, are helpful to look at from a month on month standpoint and some from a year on year standpoint and some from a, from both. In this case, days on market, I like to look at both. So we have a flat number month on month. December was 51 days on market until sale. January was 51 days. Just to clear up, because sometimes this is a confusing number, this is how how long an average home is on the market until it goes under contract. This isn't how long it takes from the time it comes on the market until the time it closes, right? It's usually going to be another 30 to 45 days until it closes. So if your home is 51 days on market until it goes under contract, then it's going to be around 90 days until it actually sells, right? From the time you list it until the time you sold, about three months. Um, so this is at 51 days. Um, now, if you look at, uh, historically, this is low for the January time period historically. Um, but in terms of year on year, this is up from January of 2023 when it was 49 days. So our, our days on market are trending higher right now um, as they have been for a while. But the increase year on year is the lowest it's been in a long time. That's a 4.1% increase, only a two day increase from 49 to 51 days uh, year on year. And if you're looking on YouTube, you can see that that's by far the lowest year on year increase that we've had in over a year. The month of December was a, an 18.6% increase when we went from 43 days uh, on market in December of 22 to 51 days in December of 23. Uh, November year on year was a 25.7% increase from 35 to 44 days. De October was a 31% from 32 to 42. September 48% increase from 27 to 40 days, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We even had a few um, greater than 100% uh, prints when we had, for instance, the month of April of 2023 went up from 24 days on market in 22 all the way up to 54 days in 23. So we're not going to see the a great percent difference as what we saw in 2023 and these days on market numbers, but I do think we're going to see, generally speaking, a higher floor for the days on market numbers. So it's just taking longer for homes to sell right now. And part of that, again, it, it's going to slow down even more. We might see this number spike a little bit in February based on all of those new listings and the low pending sales that happened in the month of January. So that'll be interesting to, to uh, keep track of. Now, what, how is this all impacting pricing? It's not impacting it a whole lot, at least not in a negative way. Um, not yet, okay? I, that's very important because there's a lot happening right now. Um, so we're not exactly sure. I, I don't yet have a read on the room with, with how 
you know, this year is going to uh, shake out just based on uh, these uh, early first, you know, six, seven weeks. But January 2024, January of this year saw a 4.2% increase to the median sales price. It went up from 299000 in January of 2023, uh, all the way up to 311500 uh, this past January. So if, you, if you're wondering what's the uh, average, technically not the average, technically the median, but we use the median, it's more accurate than, than an average. Um, what's the typical sales price in uh, the greater Greenville area? 311500 it was that number in the month of January. And we've been kind of bouncing around in the in the 300 teen numbers. December was 315, November was 313. Um, and then the highest print we've ever had was October, 324,900. Um, but we're seeing normal, these month on month fluctuations are normal, right? Um, the the thing that, that stands out the most to me is that uh, 2023, we saw very, very modest appreciation on a uh, year-on-year basis for most months. And we even had the month of May last year where the median sales price was lower than it was uh, in May of 2022. Um, But we didn't have a single month last year where the median sales price went up uh, year-on-year over 2%, uh, sorry, over uh, 3% until we got to October. And then October was a 7.7% year-on-year increase, then November 3.1%, then December 6.7%, then January 4.2%. Well, what happened in October? In October, mortgage rates peaked, and then they started to come back down. And guess what? As soon as that happened, we saw prices start to go back up at a more normal pace. 4.2%, that's a pretty healthy number by and large for the Greenville market. We don't want to see median sales price is going up 15 to 20%. That's insane when the market's like that. Um, by and large, we also don't wanna see negatives. That's that's bad for sellers. Uh, that can cause people to get locked into their homes, uh, proverbially speaking. And so we like to see modest appreciation is the best case scenario. Um, if, if we end the year at 4.2%, I'd say that's great, really for everyone all around. Uh, in in terms of buyers and sellers alike. Um, And so we'll keep tracking uh, what's going on here. But again, if we start to see inventory trickle up, that could have a damper on uh, these median prices going up. Now, what about the average proper? If you really, really are a stickler about this and you're like, you know what, screw the median, I just want to know the average. The average was 378,359 for the month of January 2024, which was a 7.5%. 2% increase year on year. Averages are skewed by all of these really expensive homes. We we have, you know, uh, several million dollar homes that have been selling recently. So that skews the average. That's why I prefer the median. But if you're wondering, it went up from 352 and change in January 23 to 378 and change in January 24. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at. We've had a, a slew of positive uh, average prints year on year now for quite some time. Um, and we also even had a uh, a month on month increase from December average into January. So that's interesting as well. Although I don't think that there's a whole lot to, to glean from that. Percent of list price received. This is the percentage found when dividing a property's sales price by its most recent list price, right? So it doesn't account for price reductions. Then you take the average for all properties sold in a given month not accounting for sour concessions. So we're not factoring in price reductions and we're not factoring in sour concessions such as if they're paying for closing costs, things of that that nature. So with those two things in mind, um, we saw a 0.3% increase year on year in the percent of list price received. December, right at 98.1%, which is historically right along the norm. So right now, in terms of what sellers are getting for homes that they have listed, Um, It is very much historically normal. This is one of the few numbers in all of this that we can look at, you know, pre-pandemic and say, okay, where the market is right now is very similar to where it was before things got crazy. 98% is right around where we were hovering during uh, the pre-pandemic era. Uh, Now, if you want to go way back, if you want to go back into the 2014s, 2013s, 2012, it was down in the 94 to 96% range. Um, But really, since 2016-ish, we've been at or above 98% uh, 
um, and that's where we're hovering right now. December was 98.2%, so we had a slight month-on-month -month decrease, uh, but that is a pretty normal seasonal decrease. If, if you look at, uh, at the chart that I have, you can see that there is frequently a January decrease in the percent of list price received. Things are just slower this time of year generally, uh, but year-on-year -year, a 0.3% increase from the 97.8% that we were looking at in January of 2023. And that's when things were really slow. <clears throat> Excuse me, January of last year, um, it was it was remarkably slow, at particularly the first half of the month. So not surprising that we saw some, uh, some improvements there. Um, housing affordability index, not gonna spend a lot of time here. Housing affordability uh, stayed roughly the same. We're at a 90 um, in the housing affordability index. We want that to be 100, 100 means the median household can afford the median priced home given prevailing interest rates and all of that. Mortgage rates have gone up recently. There is no way around it. Um, we So I should back up for a second and talk about this for a moment because we've talked about mortgage rates a lot the past few months, as we should. Um, we had some very hot, like very unexpectedly hot um, economic prints that came out last uh, last week. And that sent the 10-year yield just soaring. And if you listen to my uh, to my podcast where we talked about the the Fed and the 10-year yield and how that affects the 30-year fixed rate mortgage and how all of the economic data impacts that as well, uh, then you already understand how that works. Hot economic data that would potentially indicate that inflation uh, might not be going down as the Fed wants it to, that's causing... Uh, a sell-off in treasuries, which then causes the yields on treasury to go up. So the 10-year yield now is much higher than it was uh, just a few weeks ago. That has caused mortgage rates to be sitting, at least according to Mortgage News Daily, in the low sevens. Now it's still much lower than the eights when they were, you know, when they hit the eight range in October. And again, Mortgage News Daily is also a bit higher probably than what most people are able to get out there in the marketplace. Probably most people can get a, uh, you know, if they have good credit and uh, and all of that, not a lot of debt, um, most people would probably be able to get in the mid sixes in terms of their, uh, in, in terms of the the mortgage rate that they're able to, to get from a good lender. Um, but regardless, rates are up quite a bit from where they were a few weeks ago. And so that also drives this housing affordability index. So we have um, we have median prices going up over 4% year on year. Plus we've got mortgage rates that went up, you know, about, about a half a percentage point in just a few weeks. Um, all of that means that we're seeing this housing affordability index kind of flatline at the moment. And what we'd really like it to do is to be over a hundred. That would be ideal. Unfortunately, um, that only happens if mortgage rates are going to come way down in my opinion, uh, because they ha mortgage rates have to come down so far that it doesn't, that, you know, when more buyers come in the market because rates are going down, which happens every time, every time rates go down, mortgage applications go up. Um, we can see this in national data. We can see this in the local data. Uh, but we need mortgage rates to come down far enough that when that demand spikes and then that causes prices to go up at a faster clip than 4.2% uh, year on year, uh, we we need the 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 monthly cost to still be offset greater by the by the lower mortgage rates. I don't know if that made any sense. Hard to explain. Uh, but but basically, we need mortgage rates to come quite a bit down in order for this housing affordability index to improve. Inventory of homes for sale. This is basically this is another one of these numbers that always gets revised and it's always revised lower. So um, it said January's uh, inventory was thirty eight. 134, 3,834, and that would have been a whopping 24% increase. When that gets revised, it's probably going to be around 3,500, which is still going to be a very big increase from January of 2023, which was 3,082. So we're definitely seeing inventory going up. Um, now, December was up as well, uh, but it was only up 5.9%. So we got the revised December number. It got revised to uh, 3,440. Let's see what that was revised up from. I'm looking at last month's stats. So December, before it got revised, it was saying 3,726. So it got revised down by over 300, down to 3,440. Um, so probably January will will do the same thing. That's why I think January is going to end up around uh, probably around 
3,500. But again, that's still a big increase in inventory over January uh, of 2023, which was 3,082. So we're seeing inventory start to pick up. Great news for buyers, right? You've got more options than you have in a long time. We haven't had a January print this high since pre-pandemic. Uh, so that is a positive if you're a buyer. If you're a seller, not so great, okay? Uh, but that's still, um, that's still uh, again, lower than what we were seeing pre-pandemic. Um, so you can't complain too much if you're, if you're a seller, right? If, if you're selling a home right now, and uh, or trying to sell a home right now and you're not getting it under contract then it either needs work or it's just overpriced like those it, this isn't a you can't blame the market the market is still a seller's market it's just not nearly as fast uh, or as crazy of a seller's market as we've had some other times the past uh, three to four years month supply of inventory um <laughs> which is taking uh, the inventory of homes for sale at the end of a given month divided by the average monthly pending sales from the last 12 months. If you've been paying attention, you know that both of those numbers are inaccurate. Um, and so we can't base a whole lot off of uh, the January number, which has said 3.1 months supply of inventory. December was revised to 2.7 months, which was up 8% uh, 8 percent year on year from the 2.5 months that we had in December of 2022. Um, January, probably after this gets revised, it'll be up to 2.9-ish months supply of inventory. That's still going to be a pretty big increase from January of 2023, which was 2.4. So again, we are seeing inventory jump, but three months of inventory is not much inventory. 2.9, 3.1, whatever, still historically much lower than, uh, than the levels that we've normally seen in the past which was, uh, you know, pre-pandemic, we were typically bouncing around the mid threes uh, to the mid fours was typically, you know, where we found things back then. So we're still in the high twos, low threes, still historically pretty low. Um, that's all we're going to talk about uh, with regard to that. I'm just going to mention um, just kind of my general sense for what's happening right now. Um, the mortgage rates... The, the mortgage rate volatility has really put uh, a big damper on things for sure. Like sellers are definitely feeling the mortgage rate volatility that we're experiencing right now. Sellers are definitely experiencing the fact that uh, there are fewer buyers looking right now. So um, I, I, I think we'll, I do think we're still going to have a very busy spring season. And if I'm a seller right now, obviously you have to, uh, you have to consider, you know, the feedback that you're getting. But if you're getting a lot of showings from people, um, but people are just kind of nitpicking your property, um, consider what they're nitpicking, right? If they're nitpicking major things, take care of those things, right? If they're nitpicking things that you can't control, wait it out. Because we're about to see a bunch of, uh, of more demand come into the market as we get towards the end of this month and into March. That's when things start to really pick up in, uh, in the real estate world everywhere in the US, but in Greenville for sure. So um, just be aware of that. There's gonna be both more supply and more demand coming into the market in these upcoming weeks and upcoming months. And I think that that's going to, uh, I think it's going to be a very busy spring overall. Um, I, I suspect where rates are right now, where they're hovering, you can look them up. Um, I don't, anticipate that rates are going to make any major movements from where they are right now. Like I'd be very surprised if, uh, according to Mortgage News Daily, um, if they go into the mid sevens, that would be very surprising if we, if we saw 7.5. I think they're gonna stay probably below 7.25%. I guess I need to revise my prediction. Um, that's not a prediction, that's just what I think is going to happen just based on a variety of things. Um, but you never know, you never know. If we keep getting hot economic prints, there is not, uh, it, it's not completely outside the realm of possibility that the Fed could come out and say, you know what, we're going to raise rates again. That is not out of the cards. Now, the Fed has not indicated that at all. Um, now, what they have indicated is that they want the market to kind of do their work for them. They they like to see uh, treasuries to uh, higher and rates to be higher and all of that without the Fed having to increase their rates. They don't, they don't want the market pricing in uh, a bunch of rate cuts and the market had done that and now the market has backed off of that 
Um, so I'd be pretty surprised if, if uh, you know, unless we keep having a bunch of, of really hot economic data, I'd be pretty surprised if the Fed stated that they that they intend to raise rates. Um, but now we're, we're very much at risk of we might not even see a second quarter rate cut by the Fed. Um, that's very much, I'm very skeptical of that right now. We'd have to really see, I, I think, a turn in the data. The data would really have to start to show in March and April that inflation is starting to go down. And right now, uh, we're seeing some very mixed signals on the data front, and the Fed's not going to like that. The Fed wants to see consistent data showing that the economy is slowing down and that uh, and and uh, that inflation is also going closer to their target of 2%. So we got to monitor that. Um, a, a lot hinges on that for what the rest of this year looks like. We may have a little bit of a delayed uh, busy season as a result. You guys will be the first ones to know it because I will let you guys know. So thank you guys for listening. That's all for today's episode. I appreciate you guys. Like, rate, review, subscribe, all of that for the show. If you need a realtor in the Greenville area or you want me to refer you to a realtor outside of the Greenville area, my contact information is in the show notes. We will talk again next time.